In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover how to handle annotation data inside of a PDF. We'll go over the typical ways the annotation data are usually stored inside of a PDF document and discuss some of the best practices in terms of how to save them. Uh, so if you haven't kind of set up or watched the previous introduction to this series, go ahead and watch it now to help set up the project and get started. Once you set up the project, I will see you back here and we'll jump in. Here, I have the PDF from WebViewer in front of me and we loaded uh, some of the annotation data inside of it. So let's actually pop open VS Code. I'm just gonna kinda uh, walk you through what's happening here. So inside of a use effect that gets executed once because we're not passing anything to the dependency array, uh, we're setting up our WebViewer, uh, we're calling the WebViewer function uh, passing it an options object configuration where we pointing it towards a path that we're kind of hosting WebViewer lib uh, with all its kind of workers and all of the necessary uh, dependencies that it needs. And then we're loading up an initial document uh, coming from files where we're serving up static resources here, uh, PDF drawn about. And after that, we're also kind of saying it and giving it a reference uh, to the current viewer element uh, that is our diff tag right here. Uh, after that, it returns us a promise with an instant object. Uh, from that instance object, we can uh, deconstruct the number of different objects that we're going to be working with. As such, one of them is DocViewer. Uh, DocViewer allows us to listen for some of the events, uh, for example, by document loaded. So as soon as document loaded, we can go ahead and start interacting and programmatically uh, creating some of the annotations. So in this example, we're actually creating a new rectangle annotation on a page number one, and then we're providing it X and Y position of uh, on the page coordinate uh, that it should appear, the width and height, and as well as the author. After that, we're adding it to the annotation manager and then redrawing it on the screen. And that's exactly what we observed kind of happening here, and we have it drawn programmatically. Nice. Uh, so now what I can do is actually let's go ahead and change the author name uh, on this rectangle because right now it shows up as guest. But what I want to do is actually show it as my name. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and I will set the current user. So what we can do is inside of the document loaded, we can just say annotation set current user and set it to Andre. And now it should reload and we should go ahead and get the rectangle. And now uh, it shows up as Andre. And any kind of subsequent annotations that I'm going to be making is going to go ahead and create them um, with my username set to Andre as well here. Okay, perfect. So this is how we can create different annotations uh, and allow users to create annotations through the UI. So maybe our users are kind of co collaborating uh, placing the different annotations and now comes the point where we actually want to go ahead and save our annotation data. So what are some of the options to handle unsaved annotation data? So the best place for that, head on over to pdftron.com and go into documentation and then uh, you can just kind of get in here and go to the annotation group and inside of the annotation group really helpful guide is import export. So inside of here, and let's go ahead and make this bigger, the way the annotations are handled inside of the web viewer is that they overlaid as a layer on top of a PDF document. So now this is something you've seen with kind of the highlights and rectangle. Uh, it's drawn on a separate layer on a canvas. Now there's a couple options that we can kind of uh, save the annotations. So the way the annotation standard or kind of format that it handles is called XFDF, uh, which is just an XML based string. Now this is the same XML based string as you know something that Adobe Reader can interpret open and our annotation data is gonna be one to one. So one way we can do, we can save off the file separately and just go ahead and kind of put it inside of our you know, file storage alongside with file, maybe implement some kind of naming convention uh, to kind of say, okay, this file has this annotation data. Um, it's not my favorite approach. Another way we can go ahead and merge the annotation data directly into the PDF. And this is something that is kind of done on the default download action. So if we kind of go ahead and download the PDF, it actually kind of merges the annotation data together with the PDF. 
Now this does increase the PDF file size. It makes it a little bit harder to version it properly. But again, it's useful in scenarios where we do want the users to download the file, maybe email it out or open it up on their local desktop um, if they have to send it out. Now the one other option that's probably my most favorite one is to go ahead and save it as a role inside of a database. So what we can do is we can export the annotation data and then after that uh, we can save it um, specifically for you know the set of users or that specific user and this way we can store only a single instance of a PDF document inside of our kind of file storage and then create multiple database entries uh, for every user for their annotation data. And every time they kind of come in and go ahead and edit or change the document, we can kind of properly version that. So let's go ahead and kind of try to export annotations and see how it looks like. So to save them off, uh, we can just go ahead and export the annotations uh, simply by calling uh, annotmanager.export annotations. And we don't need to export any of the links or widgets, uh, just simply any of the annotations that the user uh, has made. And let's go ahead and kind of take a look how that looks. So inside of the document loaded, we can go ahead, um, create the annotation programmatically, and then we can just get the annotation manager to export the annotations. And this is a promise that's being returned. So we just got to make sure we are waited. And as soon as we do that, we got to declare this function as async. And what I'm going to do next, I just want to kind of console log it and see how it looks. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and refresh and perfect. So as we can see here, we have copy or we have console logged our kind of the annotation um, XFDF XML string out of it. So let's get back to VS Code, create a new file and kind of take a look what's actually inside of it. So I just quickly format it here and let's take a look what's inside of it. So inside of it, we have the XFDF um, and we have our annotations. And inside of the annotations, we have the square annotations. As you can see that when we were creating programmatically, we were kind of specifying the kind of the X and Y width and height of it, uh, the kind of the title of it. So kind of the author and who created it. And then uh, we have it imported, uh, exported here. Now, the next step, what I want to do is, okay, great, I can console log it. And at this point, you can probably create a post request, but let's go ahead and add a button to the kind of web viewer UI to handle the annotation save uh, and kind of getting that string every time somebody hits a button. So to do that, I get back to my favorite documentation here and go into the header and I go ahead and go to the adding custom save button. So now what I can do is uh, I can set a new header uh, button and place an on click. I'm going to go ahead and kind of console out and print out that XML st uh, string. So let's get back to the app.js. And inside of here, um, maybe the first thing that I actually want to do is kind of uh, set the header items. And inside of here, we can actually just go ahead and kind of console log the annotations and again don't forget to make this uh, async uh, on click we can remove async from here okay great so let's reload and kind of see what happens now okay great so now we have this beautiful save button and every time I click it it will go ahead and kind of print out uh, that XML string so again uh, it's pretty handy and I can actually kind of fit into uh, more a real-life workflow where you know, the user can kind of go ahead, create the annotation data, maybe place a comment and say comment uh, here, save it. Uh, they can also create a highlight maybe. And after that, they're like, you know what? I'm done with this document. I can go ahead, hit the save button. And you can see now our XML string is growing and uh, we can save it off. Now, that's just one of the ways to do it. Uh, we can also kind of implement auto save functionality uh, for the user. Every time you know the annotation event kind of changes or updates, uh, something happens and we can kind of go ahead and save that off. Uh, so to do that under annotations, we can go ahead, check out the events and triggers. Uh, so every time uh, the annotation has changed, we can listen for that and then execute our kind of uh, callback function that we provide. 
And inside of it, we have different actions for adding, modifying, deleting, and then we can also kind of loop through every single annotation. So if you want to implement auto save functionality, instead of introducing uh, kind of set header items and adding new save button, you can just kind of set up an event listener on the annotation change, console log out. Uh, every time there's annotation change, we can go ahead and export annotations. Um, so let's go ahead and refresh and perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and add a new comment. And as you can see here, every time we kind of create a new annotation, it just exports us the new annotation XML string. So every time I create the highlight, uh, the string is getting bigger and bigger. Now to reduce the network payload at this point and ensure that at the post request to the database quite small, we can actually implement something else. And instead of kind of calling uh, export annotations every time, uh, we can simply call a different command that comes in quite handy specifically for this use case and it's called uh, get anode command. Um, so get anode command will just give us the shorter version of all the annotations that have been added, deleted, uh, removed or changed. So let's go ahead and take a look what that looks like instead. Okay. So as you can see here, the XML structure um, it looks something like this. So this is just coming from our initial uh, load and programmatically drawing of the annotations as well as creating any other links. So here we have an add for a square. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and create the highlight. And as we can see that we have just an add for the highlight. So the payload size roughly is gonna stay the same and it's quite small. So let's go ahead and kind of change the comment place comment here, save it. And as you can see, we have added it and modified uh, that specific annotation at this point. Um, so this is perfect for kind of creating real time collaboration and ensuring the payload size is pretty small. So now we can kind of synchronize this across multiple users. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.